Welcome to New Life Live with host and founder of New Life Ministries, Stephen Arterburn. New Life Live is dedicated to transforming lives one at a time, thanks to the giving hearts of you, our listeners. Our goal is to provide you with wisdom from God's Word to give you hope and help in life's hardest places. If you have a question you'd like to ask today, our phone lines are open. Call 1-800-229-3000. That number again is 1-800-229-3000. Now here's Steve. Hi there, Steve Arterburn here. It's Friday, April the 26th. Dr. Dave Stoop is with me in Indiana, and Dr. Jill Hubbard is not. <laughs> she's, she's right <laughs> Hi there guys. in Lake Forest. Hi there. Hi, Jill. Missing you guys. Yes, we, we miss you, and um, I hope and pray uh, everybody's doing well today. I'll be flying in there uh, tonight because tomorrow Madeline Arterburn graduates, gets her master's degree. Oh. And so um, exciting. I mean, she is an occupational therapist. She graduates not with honors. She graduates with high honors. Aww. High honors. She's I worked mean, so like hard. 3.8 plus. Wow. She did. And I'm telling you, I am so proud to be her daddy. Aww. And uh, so I'll get to watch her get her graduate degree. Can I, I mean, uh, this, this woman, I don't know what, what happened to her, but God put perseverance resilience mm -hmm. and character into her and uh, she is one amazing person i get to do that on monday i want to remind everybody max men is being uh you'll hear that on focus on the family on monday's program that is um, monday the uh, 29th of april so please tune in to that and uh, really glad you're with us today. We're going to do something I love to do in the first segment. Go right to the <laughs> phones and let's talk to Dina. Dina, how are you? She's calling us from Washington, D.C., W.A.V.A. Hi. Hey, how are you doing? Hi. You, you sound fine. very how chipper. You? <laughs> you sound chipper. Are you sure you have a problem <laughs> well, that you need long, to? I waited a long time last week on the phone, so I wasn't expecting to get first up. <laughs> Yeah, well, we, 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 uh, it was God's will, don't you think? Yeah. Well, how can we help? So. What's going on? I, I have a question. I was married for 29 years to someone that was bipolar disorder. I didn't know he was mentally ill when I married him. I had a, a child, and then um, four years later, I had another child, and that's when he cracked. And I stayed in mm. marriage for 29 years. And it was very hard. We lived in fear. My kids were old enough. We all lived in fear. Not because he was a bad person, but because when he got sick, he would say things like, well, God told me, like, I need to sacrifice my son like Abraham sacrificed Isaac. Those oh, kinds of things. Oh, whoa. Oh, wow. So we, Scary. So we lived in fear. I never, when, mm -hmm. he was, when he was sick, I never knew what was in his head. I never knew what was going through his mind. So I was afraid of him. Yeah. So at the end, of, at the end he um, put on a lot of weight, and he didn't want to work anymore. And his, his family needed help with an elderly mother. And I gave him an ultimatum. I said, either you will go to work and help me pay bills, or you can go take care of your mother. And mm -hmm. he said, well, my mother needs me, so I'm going to go. Mm -hmm. So he left us. So after that, I thought, well, I don't know what he's going to get into, so I don't want to be responsible for him, so I filed for a divorce. So when what I was, what, Let me ask you this. What were you guys doing for him to get help during, through all of that? time he went he went to counseling we went to counseling i went to counseling i lived in fear i went to counseling and they said i have no grounds for a divorce every time i ever went okay, to counseling well, they said but let me ask you i this. have no grounds for divorce was mm -hmm. what well, weren't they saying you need medication for this yeah are you getting him help Is are we just going to a, a, see a pastor or what no he well he took medication and he did get he did go to our pastor he went to counseling everywhere, but he never followed through. Mm -hmm. He never stuck okay. to it. Yeah. It was easier just to quit. And he yeah. did take his medicine, but when he felt better, he stopped taking his medicine. Yeah. Those kinds yeah. of things. That's right. what happens. That is right. Okay, so what's the question for us then? At, at this stage of the game, I'm single for five years. I, I'm not looking for a spouse, but I don't want to be alone the rest of my life. Hold on. We'll help you after this. 
On Friday night, we came, we got into an argument, and I stayed in the car outside for two hours. I knew what the right thing to do was to go. The New Life Intimacy and Marriage Workshop is coming to Washington, D.C. June 28th to the 30th. You know, I know this stuff, but it's so hard to do. Mm -hmm. I hear it, I read it, and I'm always getting in my own way. I'm always expecting my wife to go first. Join Steve Arterburn. We believe that everybody has room to grow in the intimacy level of their life. And Mylan and Kay Yurkovich. We help couples understand how their attachment style is sabotaging their current relationship. And then we teach them how to create comfort in a relationship. And New Life's group leaders will help you focus on the area that will benefit your marriage most. To register or to find out more, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433 or go to newlife.com. My biggest takeaway was to just get out of my way and go first. 1-800-N-E-W-L-I-F-E. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. It's always good to work with each other. All right. Well, this is a tough one. Yeah. Another tough one. Talking it through here. And um, so the question, Dina, is what? Am I able to ever get married again um, according to God's word? Because okay. when I read it, it says that if you get married for any other reason than adultery and the reasons that God gives, that if you remarry, you're an mm -hmm. adulterer or a fornicator, and yeah. that's not an option for me. I, I would rather remain single, right? right. but I, I, I don't know. You know what? I want to tell you, I don't think we, well, we, let me just say this. We usually don't have people with that attitude, right. and so I just want to affirm you in saying something so eternity is a long time it yeah. is and and so we want to be and very careful in the advice that we give you here because uh and i just am grateful that you are mature mm -hmm. enough to say you know it's not the main thing and you and the main thing is right. your relationship with christ and right and so what is not your current comfort possible so let us no. uh, give you a few ways that this could be viewed and i'll just i'll i'll okay. start with with the first okay one one thing one way it could be viewed is that no you you aren't free to marry because um you know he uh, is hasn't been unfaithful um right and it's for better or worse yeah and right. and and right. then right along with that is you did tell him I will be married to you if if you will take the medication if you'll get the help if you'll if you'll pick yourself up here and be a responsible person he did choose to leave you and go live with his mother so he did he he made a decision to step out to of stop working on the marriage yeah. Yeah, to well, stop and that's, working that's what and, I'm and step out of relationship. Wondering, Dina, did he really understand that that's the choice he was making? He was leaving the marriage by doing that. He 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 always took the easy road, whatever the easy okay. road was. See, it was easy for him to go to Pennsylvania and take care of his mother. Okay, it but was he easier. was leaving the marriage, right? I mean, how do you? You know, it's one thing to go I, for three months. It's another thing to go and never plan on coming back. Right. I don't know 100% what was in his mind, but he was going to take care of his mother because his mother needed him, as okay. opposed to working and staying home with his family and taking care of his family. He he always took the easy road. Okay. I was and the when's one that the always last had time, to take the hard road. Yeah. When's the last time you talked with him? I've talk, I talked. I talked to him all the time. He calls me and he prays for me, and I, you know, I I wanted to make peace. I told him. I said, Look, I don't. We were two little kids trying to make a marriage work with mm -hmm. a lot of. Mm -hmm. broken pieces yeah i was broken he was broken and i admit that i didn't ever do everything right but i and i want it to be i said look i want my prayers to be heard so i i forgive you you forgive me and we're okay and so he calls me because he still is in touch with his children so mm -hmm. we talk and he, he prays for me but 
but the thought of going back to that life, I can't do it. Mm-hmm. I, I asked my kids, I said, do you think God would want me to go back there? And my, and my daughter said, what, Mom, you want to jump back in the fire? What are you, nuts? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and he's, he's content where he's at. And he, I said, do you think he's changed? And my, my kids say, no. No, okay. he hasn't hmm. changed. Okay. He's so still it, taking care of his mother? Her his mother passed away. So he lived oh. with his brother. His so he didn't died, come back after he, mom died. He's, a, he's abandoned you. Right. No, because we, we got divorced. Oh, oh, that's... We got divorced. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. I filed for divorce because I didn't know what he was going to get right. into that's trouble, right. and I didn't want to be financially yeah. responsible for him. Mm-hmm. Right. So... And so your That's question isn't at. about divorce. It's just whether or not you mm-hmm. are free to marry. Right. And uh, and there's not anybody in the picture. It's not. It's yeah. not like right. there is. No, I, like, I, I understand. Won't even look. I won't even entertain the thought. If if because according to God's word, I don't feel like I am because I made a commitment. But I don't know if a, if you ask for forgiveness for something like divorce if you ask God for forgiveness mm-hmm. it because it was a, a commitment like before God if i do you, if you ask for forgiveness and you break that how does that work i mean if you lie and you ask for forgiveness his blood covers you but if you right. make a covenant with him and you and you go back on that does his blood still cover you or or is it you're done so or divorce is the unpardonable I, I sin is that what you're saying no i'm just I'm just saying as far as getting remarried, mm-hmm. you know, it well, says if you well, get divorced, you remain single. But yeah, if, I, you know, if I were to get remarried, would I be an adulterer? Well, here's, here's just from the bottom of my heart, yeah. having looked at this from every angle, because, um, you know, I was divorced and remarried because, um, well, the person I was married to divorced me after I uncovered what had happened Mm -hmm. and I felt total freedom uh, to remarry it was cut and dried it was simple Mm -hmm. but in your case in all uh, in 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 trying to have grace uh, and and a person who believes in in freedom uh, and I just don't, I can't give you a clear answer that you are free to remarry, well, especially knowing th- this isn't like a, a man who lost his faith and you have no contact with him. You guys are praying together on the phone. And, mm-hmm. and well, you have no, ch- we don't, so no, we don't pray together. He, as he said, as he said, you pray, you pray for me. Okay. Yeah, I'll pray for you. Okay. And I don't, you know, okay. we're just, okay. I just peace. We have peace yeah. with each other. So, yeah. So, Dina, I think what you're doing in wrestling with this is right, because I think yeah. each person really has to search the scriptures, mm-hmm. seek wise counsel, and really kind of come to terms with this for themselves, and that looks different for different people. And so and I think you have to kind of, in all of your gathering, you know, come to a point where you decide what is, is right, right? Because I don't think every there's not always a completely definitive answer at the same time i think that you have to look at how sometimes people can divorce you within the context of marriage Mm -hmm. and someone who you know yes he had the mental illness issue but when he's unwilling to stay on medication like when he knows in his right mind when he's on the medication He has to stay on medication in order to be a healthy person for the sake of his family. And that you guys need him to be healthy because you can't risk the threat of him um, acting out something that isn't right, like taking the life of your son, right? Um, And and the the other thing, Dana, is when you go to Matthew 19, Jesus says that Moses gave you the right to divorce because of your hard-heartedness. Mm-hmm. You need to right. focus on that aspect yeah. of it, too, because uh, that's not rescinded. It's just added to in, the, in terms of being more specific. Right. And you would mean, I Dave, his hard heartedness? Well, uh, I would uh, say. My heart was hard? No, his. No, no his, his, his heart yeah. is hard. And I would say this. I would just say, you know, I'm trying to evaluate what to do with my life. And I want to know if in that evaluation, um, 
I am bound to you or not. And so while we're apart here, before I do make a decision, I want to know what is your situation and with medication, with getting help, with working, I want to make... It's kind of too late for all that. Yeah. I think... He's already, he's probably, already gone. Yeah. So it's, it's really... I, I want to give you the answer that you're free, but I don't feel completely free to give you that answer. And, and so when Jill okay. says it's right for you to be struggling with this, I, I just think you have some more people to talk to that are close to your situation and know him mm -hmm. that might be able to give you a more definitive answer. But we do know this. Jesus said there were two situations where a person was, was free to leave, and then I, I believe that that means free to remarry, not committing adultery, and that is when someone's unfaithful to you, and then the second thing is to be abandoned by a non-believer. It's just really clear. So, well, my husband, wow. my ex-husband, did say um, he he asked me when I was going to get remarried. I said I'm not even looking for a man. I said I don't want to be an adulterer. He said, Well, you're free to get married because I looked at a woman and lusted a million times in my heart. He said that to me. Hmm. Okay. I said, Well, that's nice to nice to say. Well, well so he's so. clearly saying he doesn't plan on pursuing you in that well, way he also yeah he is making a declaration to you yeah. that you are free to marry and which is it's another it's complication uh that needs to be checked out so um i i wish i had a more definitive okay. answer but i'm glad that you called All us right. and let us well. talk about this and talk it through i think for other folks they just say, oh this is just you know clear cut and and move on but it, it's 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 something to wrestle with and, and really especially is. when there's an abusiveness element to it i don't think we're supposed to stay in harmful situations mm. life-threatening yeah. right yeah all right let's uh how about we go to uh mike here he's calling from one of my favorite places in the world glorietta new mexico used to go there with my parents hi there how are you hey i'm very good thank you for taking my call you bet. What's going on? One of the thing, one of the things that I've learned that's really helped me over the last ten or fifteen years in relationships that I wanted to share with you and the listeners. Uh, when we rightly divide the word and when we really pray on it, I go to Psalms thirty-seven and four, which in mm -hmm. part says, "God will give you the desires of your heart." I believe we are so broken and so incapable of knowing what healthy Christian desires are that what that verse means is God literally puts the correct desires onto our hearts. Those are the desires that we're supposed to have. It doesn't mean that if I desire my rent to be paid or a Cadillac to be given to me or meet the right man or woman, that God looks at that and says, yeah, I, I see that. I can agree with that. Let's go ahead and work on that. I think we've even had a, a complete charismatic movement be based on just one or two verses. So. I, I've heard it so many times quoted over the last 10 years, not only on talk radio, but in life and in my own ministry and outreach work. I'm just asking people, especially when it has to do with relationships, do you even have the right desires? Are you even capable of that? Mm -hmm. And in fact, does that verse literally mean that the Lord is going to take care of those, those desires? So turn down the volume of your inner monologue, pray and listen. And when you get those correct desires and you act on those desires that he's put in your heart, I think it can just revolutionize your Christian life and your walk with other people in relationships. That, well, that's you know, my comment. Well, I, like I guess it's let, not a let question. Me well, yeah. The, um, the broader message that I take from what you're saying is that we really need to pay attention to the, the whole counsel of God. But the mm -hmm. scripture that I think outlines exactly what you're saying is Romans 12, uh, 2, uh, where it says, uh, don't be conformed to this age, but be transformed by renewing of your mind. And in the NLT, it says by changing the way you think. And then it says this. OK, so we're going to be transformed. God's going to change the way we think. And it says so that you may discern what is good and pleasing and perfect. And so it's a changing of the way we think 
through working with the truth that that gives us the ability to know what's pleasing what's perfect what's good and if we don't do that if we don't have that transformation that change of heart or mind then of course what you just like you're saying we're going to miss it we're going to have no idea what god wants for us it's a great reminder and i appreciate you calling us and uh, giving us a chance to talk about that if you need help if you're confused if you're concerned if you if you really feel like you got to go beyond what you've been doing and i think all of us reach that point at some place when you call us at 1-800 new life we want to help you we want to give you godly counsel based on the whole counsel of scripture we'll take a break uh, we'll uh, come back right after this for more of new life live and i uh, hope this is going to be a great friday my wife had found me out through my past and my sexual addiction since I was a small child. It really gave me the opportunity to start digging into my past, start digging into my childhood, figure out what was causing me to feel the way I was feeling. Every Man's Battle will really give you that opportunity because all the guys there in that room are there for the exact same reason you're there. I don't want to be the reason that my kids are going to counseling. I don't want to be the reason that they begin to struggle with the same issues that I'm struggling with, and I've got to put an end to this. Yes, you can be different. God does love you. You can be forgiven for this, and there's a way out of this. But you have to acknowledge that you have to change, and that there's a problem. If you're struggling, call us. There are people on the other end of the line who want to hear from you, who want to help you. We don't want you to hand down something to another generation that just looks like pain and destruction. You can hand down redemption, but you got to take that first step. Just give us a call. It's 1-800-639-5433. It's 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Last year after Every Man's Battle, I was so moved by the transformation that I saw, not only in myself, but in the guys in our small group and the other people that were there and the stories that I heard that I decided to go ahead and join Club New Life as a contributor to that. You can help New Life Live stay on the air by joining Club New Life today. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433. You guys are doing God's work here. You're restoring marriages. You're giving people hope. It's just been such a blessing to me, and I just wanted to encourage you all. When you see something good that God's doing, just jump on that and help support that. Support Club New Life, and together we can help hurting people find help and hope in life's hardest places. Call 1-800-639-5433. Give your support to them if you can, and, and just help them do what God's doing here in the, in the world. Call 1-800-639-5433 to join Club New Life today. We'd love to hear from you. If you have a question or a comment, call toll-free 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. This is Terry McIntosh with some encouragement for you this week. If you struggle with anger, divorce, grief, weight loss, or many other things, we believe you can benefit from a life recovery experience. If you want to find a life recovery meeting, we can help you with that. Or if you want to know how to start a life recovery group in your church, Give us a call at 1-800-NEW-LIFE and ask for Reba and she can get you started. Also, we have an app for your smartphone or tablet. It allows you to live stream New Life Live and catch up on archived programs. You can read articles. There are short audio and uh, video teachings as well. Just go to newlife.com and look for the download the app link. It's right at the bottom of the homepage. Steve, back to you. All right, Terry. Thank you very much. And, you know, Terry was talking about life recovery. Uh, Dave and I were looking at the April best-selling Bible list from uh, the Christian Booksellers Association. The Life Recovery Bible is not number one. It's number two after a gift Bible. Yeah. So of all the Bibles on the list, the number two or the, the best-selling study Bible is the Life Recovery Bible. That's why they've sold three million copies of it. And then in the top ten, every man's Bible is number nine. These are great gifts for folks, and I hope if you need a Bible or need a great gift, you'll give one of those. Let's go to Connie, Washington, D.C. W.A.B.A. is the station. Connie, how are you? I'm fine. How are you, Steve? Doing all right. What's going on with you today? Well, um, I want to call and encourage people to come to your Finding Freedom conference. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Oh, wow. I'm very nervous, so just be patient <laughs> with me about calling. 
Okay. But I really, if there's someone out there who's thinking about it and would like to know, hmm, do I want to do this? Do I not want to do it? Um, I wanted to encourage them to do it. Why do you want to encourage yes. them to do it? How do you know? Um, because it's, um, it's a weekend that is just, it's intense. But it's so full of wisdom, mm. and it's so full of opportunities to learn and to grow. And I wanted to take all of that in. I think other people would benefit from all that you offer that weekend. And when I walked out of that weekend, I felt so blessed. Mm. I felt like I had grown, but I also felt that I had a road that I still needed to travel in order to find the freedom that I was looking for. Right. And I hope I'm not going on too long, Stephen, but you give us at that weekend a booklet, and it follows the presentations that you make. And um, that has just been a godsend for mm. me. Um, I have those notes. I can go back. I can reread them. It reminds me of the weekend. It makes me feel like I'm not alone. I just find it so incredibly supportive. So mm. I still have the weekend going along with me now. That's so great. Well, thank you for that. And uh, I, I, I'm so thrilled to get to do that because a lot of times we, we think, well, what is there for me? And this is, this is what, what we've, co we've got for you doesn't matter really what the issue is it's wisdom to help anybody move to a different place yeah. a better place in your life and thank you for yeah. encouraging others to come and there's nothing like somebody that's been through it that can verify there is a way for us to get to a better place if we're willing to take a risk and and show up and boy i'll tell you we have some great therapists that uh, who was your counselor there when you you went um, I want to pull that up right now. It was Anna, and she was mm. fabulous. Yeah, absolutely See, fabulous. Very yeah, have, supportive. Very yes. encouraging. Nice. Well, I'm glad you had Anna, and uh, hope and pray that you continue in all that you're doing. And thanks for encouraging others to do something uh, that just might make all the difference in the world. I'm going to send you 100 days of peace right there, uh, even though you found it hopefully at the uh, workshop. Let's go to uh, Michael, Los Angeles. California, KKLA is the station. Hi, Michael. Hey! Are you Michael? Or Michelle, or Michael, or whoever. <laughs> yes. Hello? Hi. Who's there? Oh, I'm so sorry. Hi, how are you doing? <laughs> Good. What's going on? So, um, I recently got married about uh, two years ago. Okay. And about a year into the marriage, I committed adultery. Hmm. Um, my wife said she wanted a divorce. Um, but not at the moment. She wanted to file later. Um, we've been separated for about about a year, and just recently, she said that the only thing that's holding her back from getting the divorce is the money. Um, I have the money, and my question is, do I give her the money to let her file, even though I don't want the divorce? Um, so, mm. wow. What, why doesn't she have the money and you do have the money? Um, well, right now we're uh, living separately. Um, right now, financially, she's struggling a, a little bit, and I'm not struggling as much as, as her, and that's the reason why I do have the money and she doesn't. You guys didn't work out some kind of um, financial arrangement that would work for both of you in the separation time? No, he didn't. Well, I think that. I think that's the. Would be something you'd want to do. Um, if you're unfaithful, and then she leaves, it seems like if you wanted to win back her heart, right. you part of that would be a generous to spirit her mm -hmm. toward her and compassion yeah. toward her, versus. I'm keeping all the money I can get, even though I'm the person that was unfaithful. So you, I want some clarification when we come back. For 
most of my life I've been dealing with an opiate addiction. Why is opioid addiction quickly becoming one of our nation's biggest killers? Maybe it's because it isn't only those who are addicted who are in denial. We did what I see so many parents do, is it can't be an addiction. There's something medically wrong. It's impossible to solve a problem when you don't know what you're up against, and families will try to find any explanation except the one that will put them on the right path. Alcoholism and drug addiction is a family disease. It doesn't affect just the individual. If someone you love is abusing painkillers, know what you're up against. It's time to admit it's addiction and seek treatment. Call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We have Christ-centered partner treatment centers around the country. Call 1-800-639-5433 or visit us online at newlife.com. We just made a decision. We will do whatever it takes. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. I'm an addict, and I'm trying to get God in my life again. You seem to be able to get to the crux of a problem quickly. Our Christ-centered treatment programs can help you break free to embrace all that God has for you and your family. I just want to thank you guys for bringing me to a relationship with Jesus. There really is help for marital problems, depression, addictions, panic attacks, and feelings of hopelessness. I came back with so many tools to help me prepare myself to fight this struggle and this battle that I have every day. You can start living again today. Living the life God intended for you. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. They did care and they did follow up very lovingly and it made all the difference in my life. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Someone who cares is waiting at the other end of the phone. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Just call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 1-800-639-5433. glad you joined us for New Life Live. To be a part of the program, call 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. We're back talking to Michael from Los Angeles, KKLA. Jill, you had something you wanted to say here to Michael as we get the, try to get, get some help to him. I'm just wondering, Michael, um, what you have been doing to win her heart. Um, well, I've, I've been going to, to counseling. I've been going to, to church and I've been talking to my, to my pastor very frequently on just advice on how to pursue her. Okay. And is anybody, am I the first one that suggested perhaps being generous financially would be a great way? Am I the first guy? That um, <laughs> well, you're the first person that I mentioned this, uh, question to. Mm-hmm. This was just recently that, that she said this about, um, the money was holding her back from getting a divorce. Okay. But, because it sounds like to me, you don't want to divorce her. Correct. She wants to divorce you. Well, and she doesn't trust you. Yeah. Right? And you hurt her deeply. Yeah. Yeah. And so now you kind of hold the purse strings, and it's a controlling thing. And mm-hmm. so. What's your, what's your pastor suggest to you, Michael? I'm sorry, say it again. What what does your pastor suggest you do to win her heart? Um, just uh, try to communicate with her, try to um, get to know her again, take her on dates, um, check in at all, check in on her, mm-hmm. call her, talk to her, um, you know, just say that you care, you love her, you're trying to build the trust again. It seems like if you were to give her the money, that would throw her a curve. Like, I don't want the divorce, but if you insist, here's the money. Because that's an act of generosity, as Steve is saying. Mm-hmm. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to knock her off balance because it's not what she's expecting you to do. Right, that you don't want to hold her hostage because no, of it money. It you're holding her hostage, really. Yeah. And it is an indication of a change of heart. And okay. it's truly putting God first and not money. And it's putting her heart first before money. And so you're saying to her, I, I realize that if the only thing that's holding you back is money, that, and I have money and I caused this split up here, 
I'm going to be generous with you, and, and I'm hoping that it would be an indication that you might want to think about giving us another chance versus using it to fulfill the divorce wish that you have. And then, okay. and then even if she files for divorce, even if she gets the divorce, you could still let her know your heart has not changed and you still want to be with her. Okay, but can I interject something here? Sure, so, sure. Michael, I, you know, I know it's hard in a phone call to convey certain things, but here it's <clears> like <throat> you guys are a year into the marriage and you cheat on her. Okay, yeah. you know, every girl is like waiting for that, you know, getting married, being married, and a year into it, the dream dies. How much remorse have you felt? How much have you, you know, had insight into what led you to that? Um, you know, m most people that have affairs actually are don't really show a lot of remorse. Um, and, and often feel entitled. But really what the other person needs to see is you being so grieved by this that it moves you to become a different person and to change your life. And unless, you know, it doesn't really matter what you say and anybody can go down a checkoff list, but she really needs to experience you differently. Okay. That, that you would do whatever it takes to prove to her that you're on the way to becoming a different man. Okay. Does, does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Like, so what are your intimacy issues that you had to throw all this away so soon into the marriage? Um, you know, I went to, to counseling and they brought up some interesting points that came up from my childhood about, um, being insecure, mm -hmm. and that's why I um, looked outside instead of communicating with my wife. Right. And um, I, I'm very remorseful of what I've done. I've, okay. I put her in a financial struggle. I've, I've torn my family apart. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to just mend it and okay. just, so, you know, have her back. Right. So along with the insight about yourself, you've got to communicate mm -hmm. to her like really understanding what you've done to her even though this was your issue you know this was your you know um very inadequate way of coping you mm -hmm. took her heart and just ran over it and left it there right right so you, yeah. to communicate to her that you know you want to understand what you did to her what it did to her have you talked with her, Michael, about the things you've learned about yourself? I have. Um, we don't communicate um, as much as we did before. It's, it's strictly via text message and a phone call here and there. But I have communicated uh, that's, that's good. Um, what I've done and, and how remorseful I, I am. Okay. It, have you asked her to tell you how she feels, how it hurt her? Um, well, recently, no, I haven't. Okay. But she did tell me when it initially happened. Yes, she did okay. tell me. I I just want to say this. Yeah. The, the original question was whether or not you should give her money to file for divorce. Mm -hmm. And I really think you, you need it to step back from all of this and really be honest with yourself about what happened and what you've done since then. And I think if you take a path of humility now and you were able to look back and say, I, I betrayed you and then I really financially have not been fair with you. And I am so sorry for all of the things that I have done and the ways I've handled your leaving me as a result of this, and I've got a change of heart and I want to win your heart back, here's the money. 
If you need to file for divorce, you file. But I want to tell you something. I'm getting counseling. I want to be the man that you could be proud to be married to. The man that committed adultery is no longer inside of me. I am I am dead to that man, and here are the people I'm working with to be sure that man never, ever comes back. I think if you have that kind of humility, that's your, your best approach versus mm -hmm. should I withhold the money because she's going to use it to file for divorce. Yeah. You want to give the money and then, you know, have her see you in such a light that she decides not to use it for divorce. So you have to ask yourself, what have I done and what kind of guy do I want to be? And, and that should lead your decision financially and then in the area of building character and, and repair. It I would be really surprised if she didn't respond positively to a total okay, change. Okay, so and then a last thing, Steve. I think he gives the money and then he says, before you decide to go through with the divorce, would you go with me? Mm. on our marriage on the marriage new life marriage weekend yes as just a last ditch effort to help us both whether we stay yep. together or we split apart you know yep. you can admit your own intimacy issues can we help each other heal from this right great great way to deal with it and so many times i've suggested people if you're going to divorce be sure mm -hmm. that you can say i did everything i could because when they go to this intensive, most of the time they decide no divorce. Most of the time they decide, right. I'm, I'm, we can work this out. Right. I see what happened. I have new insight, mm -hmm. new wisdom. Great suggestion. All right, I'm going to send you a copy of Worthy of Her Trust. Okay. And uh, I hope and pray that that's going to be a blessing to you. It's available to any man who has betrayed his wife. This is how you can win her heart back and become the man she wants. And it's the man that you want to be, worthy of her trust. When you're worthy of her trust, you know, you're, you're worthy. <laughs> and uh, God loves you, whatever you're doing. But when you're a person worthy of her trust, God doesn't just love you. He approves of you as a man and what you're doing. And she loves me. Yeah, that's right. We'll be back right after this. We need to talk. She's asked me for the first time if I would consider myself a sex addict. You know, I thought it was just about admitting the things that I had done wrong. I, I never had a clue that it was about redeeming our story. You know, I thought it was just about coming clean on what I had done. I had no idea how to help her with her pain. She was a mess, I was a mess, and, and we got divorced. Going to EMB, surrounding myself with these other men, they accepted me for who I was and what I had done, but they challenged me to step up and do better. You know, they'll be around other men who are not just pointing the finger, but um, willing to get in and wade through it with them, you know, get in the trenches. They'll get hope from this workshop. Take my sweet wife and my story. We were divorced, remarried, and on our way to what I think uh, will be the sweetest years of our lives. You know, it's no longer simply about surviving. For the first time ever, you know, we're thriving, we're enjoying where we're at. Hey, listen, if you're struggling, we want to see you at the workshop. Give us a call, 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. Your ministry has saved my life. If you struggle with emotional hurt, family or marriage problems, the pit of depression, or the pain of addictions, we can help. I'm down 100 pounds now from what I was. You guys are awesome. You are a blessing to America. <laughs> Our treatment programs provide clinically appropriate solutions from licensed professionals, all in a biblical framework. I have had problems with alcohol. I think God has ordained this place to be His. You don't have to be a prisoner of your pain. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. She tells me that I'm a new man and I feel like a new man. It worked for me and it can work for them too. This time it is different. If you're ready to take the first step toward genuine spiritual and emotional healing, please call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433.
To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. We're back. I've got time for another phone call. But before I do, I just uh, want to remind you about finding freedom. We can help you if you'll call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. doesn't matter what it is. We're going to help you. There's a, there's a path. There's a, a pattern. Uh, there is a program. And there are people that want to help you get better. Whatever it is, 1-800-NEW-LIFE, Finding Freedom. That's going to be Orange County on May the 3rd. Also, a gift of any amount, I send you this beautiful devotional book, 100 Days of Peace. It's fantastic. It's just our way of saying thanks for supporting us. We need your help to continue to do this. And $30 a month, I'll send you eight books from the Arterburn Wellness Series, Understanding and Loving and Loving a Person with so many of the major issues we deal with here, whether it's depression, narcissism, bipolar, uh, borderline personality disorder, all of those are chemical dependency, sexual addiction, all of that is right there. Call us, $30 a month to be a member of Club New Life, and I'll send that library to you, our way of saying thank you. I'm sorry I could not get to all these calls here on this Friday, but I'm gonna go to Anthony in Concord, New Hampshire, He's our final caller, and I hope all the others will call us back. Anthony, uh, how can we help today? What's going on? Hi. Um, can you hear me? Yep, sure can. Oh. Um, so <clears throat> I'm uh, a little over 100 days sober. I uh, just cleaned up because I really wasn't doing good enough with my marriage. Uh, okay, 100 days great. sober. You were cracking up a little bit there. All right. Great. Yeah, and... Um, just trying to improve myself so I can be, uh, well, right now, fight for my marriage. Okay. And, uh, we lost connection and really haven't been intimate. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and it's a really big thing for her. And I just, I don't know, I just, while I was drinking, I didn't see that. Yeah. yeah. Now well, I'm it was trying to hard get her when, back. You, when you were being more intimate with alcohol than with her right yeah she protected herself she's been protecting herself and so So, now she's building up trust and that takes a while or not yeah she is she stuck okay she's not all right so (laughs) the question for us is then what she said she she, you Um, said she shut off okay so my question is um what's like, what kind of steps do you take to engage with her to where she'll be responsive? Like, I'm not telling her to necessarily do what I'm doing, like, uh, get into commun- uh, social ministries and read the Bible. I'm just, I'm just trying to engage with her, like, I listen to uh, right. Dave Clark. Let, let, and so, okay. so Quick Anthony, question. is she also drinking? She's still drinking, yes. Okay. Okay, and so you go. are you going to any kind of meeting, recovery program, anything like that? No. Um it wasn't I I decided not to uh because this, we have two kids and I have responsibilities at night and I just But what but what about meetings? Step. Celebrate recovery, life recovery groups, AA. Yeah. Yeah, we have celebrate recovery in the area, but I just I decided to take another route. Um, I joined Soulcon Ministries, and it's really helped out just connecting with other men to, to who have battled with addiction, okay. um, whether it's alcohol or or okay. porn, or and uh, good. That, that's what's oh. helped me. Okay, good. Now let me ask you this: Have you said to her, "I realized I have destroyed not only trust." but our connection and I yeah. I don't want to go another day without knowing what it is that could make a difference I don't expect to win your trust back tomorrow I don't I don't expect that we're going to be connected tomorrow but what is it that you would value that would get me one step closer to where we could be 
Do you have any idea what she would say? Have you ever asked her that? I, I no, I haven't gone in that detail. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's something to do. And then when she says it, be willing to do it. Or if she doesn't have anything to say, then say, well, I know it's kind of a weird question out of the blue. So maybe you could think about it and, and then we could talk again. But if it's all about okay. wanting to be intimate with her, sexually intimate, then yeah, there's not much not credibility in not her mind about the desire. No, you gotta you gotta talk because that's that's foreplay for a woman is to talk and listen. Mm -hmm. And and okay. she's she's you you gotta reconnect in in an intimate way that is non-sexual. Does that make sense? She's right. not gonna and want to give you yeah. her body until. You you know, so you, you give her mind. your heart. Yeah. Right. And you I'm see her. That's what I kind of took from David Clark is that, you know, you get into oh, communication good. and then you guys mm -hmm. get those emotions back in order mm -hmm. in the right spots of your marriage. And um, just the path I'm taking, and it's, it's like, like she'll say, like you're doing this by yourself. So what you should have done was get together with me first and then we'll get into the word get mm. god so well, she's telling you something yeah. isn't she and, and i i think that's a great thing mm -hmm. to, to just go back to her and say you know what not only have i been thinking about this but i talked to some folks about it and okay i'm i am not going to do this by myself anymore i heard you and let's do it and then don't be the you know the dictator in that the you mm -hmm. know let her uh, be an equal in that sharing time and looking at the word together. Now, let me send you uh, this uh, seven minute marriage solution Bible, which has it laid out for you how to do so, you know, how to do devotions in scripture together. And then I'm going to send you Dave's book, Smart Love. And that's mm -hmm. going to help you make some really smart choices here. Um, I believe that a woman responds to sincerity Mm -hmm. consistency and compassion and the what, actions to back all that up yeah and and so and and so when we're going for a result rather than the heart that's where as men we get in trouble so you got to give up the result and then what happens you end up with the result you wanted because you backed away from it and you have integrity and credibility and and well, let her also see you working on your relationship with your kids and connecting yes. with them more because yep. that gets that's, to a that's woman's a real heart turn as well. For a while. Yep. <laughs> right. So, and then the other thing is, um, there's to invite her to go to some speaker meetings with you. That'd be a cool thing. Just tell her, hey, I'd love for us together to go to these meetings. You're not, you don't ever mention her drinking or anything no. like that. You say, come go and, and let's experience this together, and uh, it really ups your game a little bit in the recovery area. Also gets you educated. You bet. Mm -hmm. Both of you. Yep. All right. I'm glad that you called, and uh, I want to thank you for that. I'll send those to you. We have a lot of resources, a lot of amazing, wonderful Bibles that, and, you know, Dave and I have spent so much of our lives editing Bibles and, and trying to create something that would get people into the Word, not our Word, but the Word. And so if you have if you don't have a trusted Bible or you've got a Bible that you can't understand, we've got one that you can't. You just call 1-800-NEW-LIFE and we'll help you find the right one. Could you help us? Could you call us? 1-800-NEW-LIFE. If you need help, come join us for Finding Freedom next weekend. Oh, my goodness. And, and also, if you have any ability to support this ministry, we'll thank you in a big, big way. Come help us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Thanks for listening. We hope this program has helped you by giving you insights for handling the challenges you face in your life. We want you to know that we're here for you, but you also need to know that New Life Live is a listener-supported ministry. To make your donation or to get any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433 or write to us at New Life Ministries, P.O. Box 1029, Lake Forest, California, 92609. Please join us again on Monday for New Life Live.